Israel is a country with one of the richest and most complex histories. It sits on the Mediterranean Sea with a population of only 9 million people, and roughly the size of New Jersey. And yet, it has one of the fastest growing economies, and the highest number of startup companies per capita in the world. However, despite being a leading hub in tech and engineering, Israel is dealing with social tensions and disparities. So, how did Israel become the startup nation? And ultimately, is it a model that other countries can follow? When it comes to countries and economics, size really isn't that important because it's all about mentality. And that's what allowed a country that has roughly the population of London to climb the geopolitical ladder so rapidly. Israel is the only Jewish nation in the world. Much of what we know about ancient Israel comes from the Hebrew Bible. According to the book of Genesis, Abraham was led by God to the region of Canaan, the promised land of his people, now the location of modern Israel. And throughout the last two millennia, this area in the Middle East has been highly disputed and was conquered over and over, including the Roman Empire, the Byzantine reign, the Crusaders, Muslims, then the Ottoman Empire that ruled almost all of the Middle East until the end of the First World War. And in 1917, something happened. During the war, British Secretary Arthur Balfour wrote an important letter and sent it to the Jewish banker Lord Rothschild. And in this letter, he promised full British support for the institution of a Jewish state in Palestine. Why? Back then, the British government was worried about the potential disastrous results of World War I and hoped to get Jewish help during the conflict. So, at the end of World War I, the British established their rule over Palestine, thanks to a mandate from the League of Nations. In the 1920s and 30s, Great Britain immediately saw the rising tensions between the native Palestinians and the Jews who were migrating there from all over the world. And in response to this, in 1947, the United Nations decided to split Palestine in two parts, creating a Jewish state and an Arab state. The problem is that while the Jewish community accepted it, the Palestinians did not. And this led to immediate violence. Right after, the British decided to end their mandate and leave the area due to the growing complications in the Middle East. And that's when Israel declared its independence. On May 14, 1948, the state was finally born. In the decades that followed, despite the rising political conflicts, Israel built one of the most technologically advanced economies. And this complex history explains much of their determination and will to improve their country. Right now, Israel is one of the world leaders in the high-tech sector, cybersecurity, AI, engineering, you name it. With a young entrepreneurial culture and over 6,000 startups, Israel's tech hub has been nicknamed the Silicon Wadi. Wadi means valley in Arabic and colloquial Hebrew. That's why Apple, Google, Microsoft, Facebook, Intel, among glass buildings and cafes filled with techies, Hundreds of multinational corporations opened research and development centers. Even the Prime Minister, Naftali Bennett, was a software entrepreneur. Now, there are many upsides to this, but also problems. So first things first, how did any of this happen? To put it simply, risk, defense, and human capital. Certainly, Israel's troubled history of war and migration made them earn their reputation as risk takers. Also, compared to its neighbors like Saudi Arabia, Iraq, and Iran, countries that are basically full of oil, Israel never had massive natural resources to rely on. So, in order to succeed, it had to create its own resources by betting on its human capital. And so it did. In Israel, many kids are encouraged to learn about software and computer science from an early age, and this is coupled with the widespread use of the English language. The second factor is the army. Israel's status is currently recognized by most UN nations around the world. However, 28 UN countries still don't recognize it as a state, and most of them are their neighboring countries in the Middle East. So since its birth, Israel has established a mandatory military service for both men and women. 
While arguably the army gives a mindset to the whole population that translates in all job sectors, it also creates valuable connections, a community, especially if we consider how small the population is. But not only that, the Israeli Defense Forces, IDF, are extremely advanced in warfare, with a large contribution from technology and engineering. For example, in response to the thousands of missiles that are aimed at Israel every month, they developed the Iron Dome, a cutting-edge defense system that intercepts and destroys incoming rockets. So in Israel, just like in many other countries, the Army, intelligence services, and tech sector go hand in hand. That's because investments, people, and skills move from one to the other. In fact, a similar thing occurred in the US with the institution of the DARPA military agency, which has always been a key investor in Silicon Valley. So, by betting on human capital and innovation, Israel created its own fortune with a unique economic model. And the result is that since 2010, the capital raised by Israeli tech companies has grown by 400%, creating a startup nation with a whole generation of young entrepreneurs. So what are the problems? First, there's an ongoing war and rising tensions between the Arab and Jewish communities. Second, the tech boom changed the country, but not for everybody. According to the OECD, Israel is still struggling with poverty and inequality. In fact, while people working in high tech receive top salaries, the majority of the population earns incomes that are way more modest. These are the people that operate most of the services and live in higher conditions of poverty. According to the former governor of the Bank of Israel, two groups are particularly targeted by inequality in skills and wages, Arab Israelis and ultra-Orthodox Jews. But while its society is still divided, there's maybe a silver lining here. In fact, in Israel, there's a massive shortage of talent in the tech industry. And yet, the foreign investments are growing. Last year, for example, they hit a record of over $26 billion, which is basically a quarter of what the whole Europe raised that same year. So the country desperately needs more people in IT and engineering, because as a matter of fact, only about 8 to 9% of the workforce is employed in tech, and it's not nearly enough. So perhaps the tech boom could be even bigger if they involved more groups, like the Palestinians. Right now, the government is testing this solution, involving not only Palestinians, but potentially also ultra-Orthodox Jews and people living in the periphery areas. And what's besides the tech industry? Last year, Israel had its strongest growth in over 20 years, and there are many layers to its economy. For example, there's agricultural production, which is rising in value, and Israel is also the largest in the world when it comes to the diamond industry, especially in cutting and polishing. But there's more. Israel has generally been relatively low in terms of natural resources. However, in recent years, it had some of the largest discoveries of oil and gas in the world, such as the massive offshore gas deposits found off the Mediterranean coast. The switch from being importer to exporter gives a whole new geopolitical weight to Israel and allows a country that has been traditionally dependent from foreign resources to become an energy power. To sum it up, Israelis faced many obstacles to build their country. Their economic and social model has many precious lessons that can be learned and followed by many other nations. Early exposure to technology and technical equipment, widespread computer studies, the use of English, policies that favor a young entrepreneurial culture, as well as investments in tech. But above all, it's about people. Because Israel in the past few decades had large waves of immigration from Europe, from America, and from the former USSR. Many of these people brought their history and education with them and made this relatively small country dynamic and competitive. And that is the secret to its tech boom.